Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of what to look for in the night sky. We're talking about the week of May 22nd, 2023. Uh, we've already recorded this video once. It turned out it didn't have any audio. So here we are doing it again. And I, it, I feel bad for you because it was so brilliant the first time through. There's no way we're going to match that level of brilliance the next time through. Uh, so what we're talking about this week is to see if um, we're going to what are our themes? One idea that we have here is that everything cycles back. We, we rotate on our axis, the Earth does, and the sky comes back around, but we've moved on our orbit. So the sky's a little subtly different than it was. The stars rise four minutes earlier each night because of that. And there are variable stars out there. The planets are moving against the background stars. Everything's the same, but everything's different. One orbit later, we come back around to the same patch of sky. Everything's the same, but everything's different. And that's been a theme that we've been following this spring and we're going to do this again. So we're going to do sort of everything we've already done and a whole bunch of stuff, but it's all new. So it's all the same as what we've been doing the last few weeks, and it's all new here as well. So anyway, let's start. In the evening sky, uh, just as it's getting dark, uh, the first hour after sunset, you look to the west, and you see uh, the you see the moon and Venus. So let's start over here. We got Castor and Pollux, uh, the, the twin stars over here, and they are... Um, Venus is down here. So you go make about a right angle, go boom, boom, boom. Castor Pollux Venus is your right angle. On the night of the 22nd, as the week just starts, the moon, uh, for me, will be about 10 to 15 percent full. If you're watching from someplace else in the world, uh, not here in the middle of North America, uh, the exact timing will be different. And so the moon will be a little more full or a little less full. But we're talking about 10 to 15 percent full on the night of the 22nd. And it looks, you know, it's not quite right. It doesn't quite make a, a rectangle. Uh, it's a little extended too far out that way to make a rectangle. But that's the idea, is uh, the moon will be making a rectangle with Castor Pollux and, and Venus. And you should you go out, check it out. I recommend, you know, take a picture with your cell phone. Uh, uh, post it someplace and tag me on it. That'd be great. Uh, the, I sit down with a sketch pad, a piece of paper, and sketch just a little bit. Do something to extend your time with this region of the sky, to enjoy it just a little bit more. The evenings here, uh, you know, in the north, the evenings here are getting warmer, and, and it's a pleasant to be out to, to observe this and spend a little bit of time under the stars to see it. By the next night on the 23rd, uh, the moon will have moved across to be just under Pollux right here. So it's sitting here just under Pollux, and it's... Um, going to be about 20% full for me. Again, a little bit more, a little bit less for you, depending on exact timing of your observing. Um, but it, this is another great, great view uh, to, to spend a little time with and to take in with the moon sitting right here with Pollux. By the night of the 24th, as we get out there, what is that? Wednesday night, the 24th, uh, the moon's going to be between 25 and 30% full. All of these are good, thin crescent moons. They're beautiful crescent moons, and it'll be above Mars out here. So you go Castor to Pollux, and take that same distance down again and then over some and you get to Mars. And so you'll see Castor, Pollux, Mars out this direction. On the 24th, the moon is right there. All three nights worth observing. Get out and observe them and, and, and enjoy them. Now, we talked, we spent a little bit of time talking about the tail of Leo, uh, the three stars in the triangle of the tail of Leo. And we talked about this last week. Uh, so we've got, we, last week, um, we, we went to, in this region to look at uh, to look at a, an elliptical galaxy. And this elliptical galaxy in the Virgo cluster here, we talked about our galaxy. We live in a spiral galaxy. Uh, you know, I'm giving an astronomy exam to my astronomy students uh, here in just a few hours as I'm recording this. And I hope that they've realized that they're probably going to have to reproduce a sketch like this. This is how important this schematic view of our galaxy is to say, you know, we live out here someplace. Uh, the center of the galaxy is towards Sagittarius down there. And so if we want to look at nebulae and clusters and stuff, we, and, and we want to look along this uh, disk of the galaxy. But if we want to see out into deep space, as we talked about last time, we want to look out through the thin part of the galaxy. And this region, uh, right by the tail of, of Leo into Virgo, where we see the Virgo supercluster, uh, this is looking uh, at a lot of galaxies in that direction. Plus, we're looking out through the thin part of the galaxy, our galaxy. So this is great. Uh, so we, we're going to circle back to this. You know, you, you all know the famous saying, right? I, I'm sure your parents told you just like my parents told me when I was growing up or, or whoever was in your life when you were growing up. I'm sure you've heard this saying a lot. Uh, you've got to make galaxies when the moon doesn't shine. 
right? That's a, I think that's the famous saying that's out there. And that's what we're going to do again. We're going to make galaxies when the moon doesn't shine. We're going to find some external galaxies. Now, the moon will be shining here by the end of the week. So if you wait until the weekend, if you wait until the 26th or the 27th, uh, 28th to do this, if you, this is another thing we probably want to do during the week, say Monday to Friday, uh, before the moon fills out and gets over into this region. But what we can do, so Dana Boa, uh, we've talked about many times before. Deneb is the Arabic word for tail. This is the very tail, tip tail of the lion. Uh, we go from Shirtan to Dana Bola, because Shirtan, Zosma, and Dana Bola. And we go from Shirtan to Dana Bola, seven, eight degrees, and go about seven or eight degrees again, a little bit less out this direction. And you've got two fine spiral galaxies there, M98 and M99. Now, these are an observing challenge. Uh, best if you have a small telescope. Get, get your small telescope out there and observe, uh, see if you can find these. Uh, what you want to do is you want to use uh, the, this fifth magnitude star. Remember, uh, stars you can see down. If you've got a good dark sky, you can see down to about sixth magnitude. Most of us can't see quite that far down. So fifth magnitude is about the, the limit of probably what we would be able to see. Remember, magnitudes count backward. Uh, the brighter stars have a lower number. Uh, and so, but this fifth magnitude star, we've gone across the border into the constellation of Coma Bernices. So if you don't know uh, the constellation Coma Bernices, this is a chance for you to find that star. Uh, just go Shertan to Dana Bola to boom, that star. And then right in there, just, just ease back to the east, uh, to, to the west, excuse me, ease back to the west and find M98 and M99 spiral galaxies. Again, last week we were looking at elliptical galaxies. These are spirals like our own galaxy uh, here. And so see if you can find those. Now you might, if you've got good steady hands and you've got a good dark sky and you've got binoculars with nice big optics, with nice big uh, open apertures, that's a lot of conditionals for you folks. But if you if you meet those conditionals, uh, you might be able to see M98 and M99 with your binoculars. And why not try? Why not try is what I say. Uh, get out there and, and, and sketch this region of the sky and poke around and see if you can get a hint of these ghostly galaxies, these smudges of light that are that are here, uh, these, these beautiful galaxies in this region off the tail of Leo again. Now, on the way there, you've got your binoculars out and you're checking out this region of the sky, looking at stars that are a little fainter than you can see without the help of the binoculars. And what you'll see, if you blow this up, maybe a third of the way from Dana Bola over to our star over here, you've got about a third of the way to two thirds of the way to these galaxies maybe. So we're talking about, I don't know, three to seven degrees uh, off Dana Bola, or maybe two to eight degrees or something like that, this direction. And I've blown that region of the sky up down here. Just off the tip, this part right here is just off the tip of Dana Bola. You'll see three fainter stars. These are good seventh magnitude stars. Some a little brighter, some a little fainter. So maybe six and a half, maybe seven and a half or eighth magnitude stars. Uh, these are stars that you should be able to see uh, with your binoculars as long as the moon has it <sighs> impinged there on you. And you can see these, these stars. You drop down, you follow this pattern, and you drop down to this star, and you get another seventh magnitude star down this direction. So, so that's a pretty good to scale. I don't do a great job with that, but this one's pretty decent to scale. And so go boom, 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 boom to try to measure this and see, uh, to, to try to observe this and look at these stars. Now, as you do that this week, you will see that there's another seventh to eighth magnitude star right there in between these stars, but that's not a star at all. That's the con that's the the asteroid Ceres, and Ceres is one of our brighter, bigger, uh, easier to observe asteroids, and it's tracking down this direction uh, toward this other star. So watch it as the week goes on. Another place that my my cell phone's so good at taking pictures of the night sky, I could get pictures of this region, I think, and watch this uh, this little dot of light tracking to the south toward this other dot of light down this direction. Now it's another great place to get your sketch pad out, get your binoculars and your sketch pad and go after this uh, and, and see if you can do this. So as the week unfolds, watch Ceres. See if you can find Ceres and watch Ceres track down to the south and watch this gap close down this direction. That's what we got for you this week. Good week. I hope you have some clear skies and have a chance to get out to observe this. Watch the moon filling up, uh, making, you know, it's just a beautiful region of the sky in the evening looking west where you've got Castor, Pollux, Venus, and 
Mars over there. And then also in the sky, look at almost due south as it gets dark. So, so in the sky all night long is this region around Leo. So find the triangle tail of Leo and look for these, these beautiful faint spirals, but then also see if you can find Ceres tracking through there. And I think it should be a great week. Uh, we'll have something, as always, uh, we'll have something new for you and something not new, basically. It's all new and it's all not new. Uh, we'll do that again next week. And so thank you for watching. Have a good week, everyone.